we will be sharing uh, we will be presenting on a small presentation on the impact of microfinance on poor in south asia this was carried out by our team out here i am my colleague professor suresh babu and ile raja so this is based on basically an impact on microfinance the basic need for microfinance the view of microfinance sort of rose basically from the a host of studies in this region in fact in this south asian region we are focused was on south asia and in the south asian region you could uh, enter the countries were heterogeneous varying in uh, per capita income there were a lot of mixed evidences there were a lot of studies each of the studies were looking at a specific angle and there are some uh, incidence of poverty was also very very different so we thought there could be a better idea to sort of look at uh, a systematic review which could sort of uh, bring these together and then sort of uh, come out with uh, the findings so that is the basic idea of the systematic review and uh, what we did was first thing we developed a conceptual framework for it uh, are you able to see the screen i mean we said that access to microfinance should be leading to access to resources and exposure to group support because what we look at as a microfinance initiative here is more based on the self help group initiative there is a women self help group initiative so that will also give them some kind of a group support and also give them some probability of a social capital and thus reducing the vulnerability that is the first uh, set of benefits what could arise by giving access to microfinance further this could lead to this access could lead to sort of increase in savings and better decision making the group support and social capital and uh, reduction in vulnerability could lead to what is called as better uh, decision making and as well as the access to resources could lead to some savings and uh, loan repayment and that could finally lead to better healthcare or asset acquisition or education or one of these kind of benefits so this is the basic conceptual framework based on which we sort of started our study so we first put our question this is question itself as to what is the impact of the microfinance on the well being of poor and what are the conditions uh, for making microfinance work for the poor in south asia because the conditions as you would see in bangladesh vishavas uh, india vishavas sri lanka vishavas nepal is very different and the poverty levels and the need is very different for example in india it's more focused on spending that money for children's education whereas in nepal or afghanistan it's more on finding uh, setting up a micro enterprise etc so that is the logic with which we we started this particular thing of course we had a set of sub questions i'm not going to get into the details of the sub questions based on that what we as a uh, based on our initial screening we divided the outcome or the benefits that could arise from a microfinance intervention into three broad, broad categories uh, a set of economic outcomes as you see which leads to increase in assets or increase in consumption or savings reduction in poverty increase in i mean opportunities for employment etc and some set of social outcomes as to better education facilities better healthcare facilities health seeking behavior facilities etc or health health seeking uh, behavior etc and the third could be basically what we looked at as was uh, with regard to women empowerment so based on uh, we sort of uh, used all the possible databases electronic databases for looking at studies and we screened the studies on the on three broad categories what is first we did the title screening in terms of country context intervention and outcomes which we had a sort of classified into these three basic categories and then we did a scrap abstract screening based on the inclusion exclusion criteria which we had developed the inclusion exclusion criteria was based on outcomes was based on the year of publication was based on the intervention type etc and then further we went in for a full text screening we followed some kind of a process pathway as indicated in this particular slide if you actually notice in most of the literature the terms microfinance micro credit micro lending micro savings these are used interchangeably interchangeably by most of the researchers so first thing is we said any of these kind of intervention we are grouping them together and these interventions could be direct 
by the MFI itself, microfinance institution, or through the banks, or through an NGO, non-governmental organization, or the SSG, what we call it as a self-help group per se. And the process, any of these interventions will have to lead to the process what we have listed out there, enhancing credit or increasing employment or creation of a small enterprise, etc., and could lead to an intermediary outcome of change in expenditure pattern or increase in social capital, health and nutrition, housing, etc., finally having an impact on reduction in poverty. This is the process pathway which we clearly looked for in each of the studies that we shortlisted for doing this particular review. I mean, if the study did not have this kind of a clear pathway, we did not basically go ahead with that basically study, basic study, because that is used to measure the impact in terms of microcredit, on the incomes, on the wealth, on asset accumulation, on other social outcomes like health, employment, etc. We had shortlisted about 69 studies and we did what is called as two sets of analysis. One was a narrative synthesis, another was a meta-analysis. And out of the 69 studies, about 26 studies qualified for meta-analysis. And uh, the rest of them we sort of used only for narrative synthesis. And this is a kind of methodologies that was basically followed, say, for example, logic regression, 18 studies had sort of logic regression and only two studies we shortlisted had simple statistical methods. We did go through, uh, the studies did go through a set of quality appraisal criteria like the selection bias and performance bias, detection bias, detection bias, attribution bias, etc. We did have these parameters, we did screen the studies for these and then basically after which we synthesized this uh, we synthesized these studies. First, we did the narrative, then they did the meta-analysis of this. And overall, we arrived at some kind of an uh, outcome like this. That is, we sort of found that there was some kind of a positive impact on households. And uh, studies assess the impact on microfinance on individual incomes of the poor, etc. And basically, what we saw, found was there are two black channels. Additional income generated, that was being generated because of the intervention, was purely based on self-employment. And they sort of found that enhanced business incomes because of microfinance intervention, because these income could be used, these uh, microfinance loans was being used for, uh, what do you call it, as was, was used for the business to uh, stock additionally, whatever was their requirement, etc. And that also led to led to some kind of a dampen, dampening of the seasonal variations in the context of what is called as the agricultural income. On the expenditure pattern, we looked at a positive association between microcredit and expenditure only in Bangladesh, not basically in the other countries. Uh, that was unique to Bangladesh, what we found. And we sort of found that a significant association was found between women's loans and the household per capita expenditure. We could sort of build these kind of relationships based on the initial taxonomy of outcomes what we had and further what we did, the process pathways. Process pathways helped us do this kind of uh, mapping in the process. And uh, just got one more minute, I'll just finish uh, and I'll, I'll almost do that. And we found that as well as reduction in poverty, microfinance had very minimal impact. Though this kind of increase in EDK, I mean, enhancement of income, etc., was marked partially seen, uh, it was not leading to a huge reduction in poverty. Access only contributed to poverty reduction, especially for the female uh, participants. It, it, have, it had very minimal and it was restricted more for the female participants, etc. And uh, there's not much of evidence found on the quantum increase in the employment also in the villages where we were, we were sort of uh, uh, studying microfinance intervention in these villages, not much of impact in terms of en enhanced employment in the village. They were going out for a village, I mean, uh, they, were, they were sort of moving out of the village for employment, etc., but not in the village. And increase in female employment was largely seen in non-farm employment in the village per se. These are, uh, of course, on the empowerment side, uh, there was, uh, we found that there was some amount of empowerment, I mean, it helped uh, gain control over the assets, etc. But they did not have 
any substantial increase in the bargaining power within the busy households. I've just listed this uh, entire findings into one uh, simple slide out here. And uh, we also have, have some implications for possible future research, which could also be listed out there, which uh, we will be sharing uh, with the participants out here. Thank you.